So when you talk about electrochemistry, all we are talking about is the conversions from electrical to chemical or from chemical to electrical. Okay. So this just deals with the conversions, the conversions of energy from either chemical to electrical or from electrical to chemical energy. Okay. So these have got different applications in our day-to-day -day lives. And we'll get to understand as we get to look at different examples. So under electrochemistry, we are going to study a galvanic cell, an electrolyte cell, and a concentration cell. So I'm going to start with a galvanic cell. So a galvanic cell is actually a cell that converts chemical energy to electrical energy. Okay. So electrical energies are the kind of energy that is stored in materials, all right? Okay. Then electrical energy, of course, is the energy, uh, uh, you know, that is, uh, that is uh, due to current created, all right? The redox uh, reactions actually are what leads to the conversions of energy from chemical to electrical. So what is a redox reaction? So a redox reaction is actually a reaction where you have both reduction and oxidation. Okay. So what is a reduction? Reaction. So a reduction is actually deals with um, okay, reduction or decrease in oxidation numbers. That's reduction. It can also be a gain of electrons, loss of oxygen, and gain of hydrogen. Okay. So what do we mean when we talk about the oxidation numbers? Okay, so I believe you've seen uh, something like this. Magnesium ion looks like that. That's how it appears. So now, when magnesium ions get to lose or ever gain electrons, so after gaining electrons, that's what happens to magnesium. So that is the oxidation number there. So it has moved from a 2 to a 0. So that is an example of reduction. Okay. A gain of electrons. So on the other hand, if we make it the reverse of that reaction, it becomes oxidation. Okay, so as you've seen, when the magnesium loses the electrons, they're supposed to appear on the right side of the reaction or the chemical equation. Okay, so now the loss of electrons, that's what you are saying, what? Oxidation reaction. Okay, it, we can also define oxidation in terms of gaining oxygen and also the loss of hydrogen. Okay, so this is basically what reduction and oxidation are. And when you combine these in one reaction, the reaction is said to be a redox reaction. So now breaking them, so a redox reaction is made up of what we call half equations. Okay, let me show you what they are. Okay, so these are examples of uh, half reactions. The first one, as we can see, an electron is on the left, and that shows that there was gain of what? There was gain of what? There was gaining number of uh, electrons. All right. So now looking at the charge there. Yeah. So the charge was three. Then there was a gain of one electron, meaning that it is going to reduce by one. And that's why we have the charge of two there. Then in the secondary equation there, what we have is an oxidation reaction because there is a loss of what? There is a loss of electrons. And that's why we have an increase in the charge from a zero there or a neutral charge to a two there. Okay. So basically, under the study of electrochemistry, you should be able to come up with what we call the overall chemical equation, representing the whole reaction. Okay. So as you may see, this time around, this example I've given you already the reduction and the oxidation reaction. So as we get to the advanced part of electrochemistry, they are all going to be given as reduction reactions and it will be up to you to be able to identify which one is going to be what is going to be the oxidation reaction so we'll look at the cell potential that's when we'll be able to look at such examples so for now let's try to analyze how we get to combine these two what these two equations to come up with what you call the overall equation Okay, so for the overall equation, what we are going to have is, first of all, we need to make sure that 
the atoms that we have in the Earth reactions are equal or equivalent. So in the first one, we're able to see that the atoms are the same. In the second one, equally, they are the same. So what are we supposed to do first of all? Let's balance now what? The number of electrons. Okay. So in the second reaction, you're able to see that there was a loss of how many electrons? Two electrons. In the first one, there was a lot, there was a gain in one electron. But basically, a galvanic cell, as I get to explain it in the next part, we should be able to see that one reaction will lose electrons, the other half reaction will gain them. So if two electrons are lost, two are supposed to be gained as well from the other reaction. Okay. So therefore, we multiply by two. The one on top there. So basically, we have two, two, and two there. The one down should also be multiplied by one. So implying that if we had the four there, we'd have multiplied the second one by four as well. Okay, so if we multiply by one, nothing will change. So for the overall equation, the electrons will cancel out, and therefore you combine your reactants. So for our reactants, we have the iron there plus this. So that is how you write the overall chemical equation. All right. Let's try now. Let's try to talk about the galvanic cell. How it works. Okay. So now, this is a, a galvanic cell. Okay. So now, a galvanic cell, like I mentioned earlier, it is just going to focus on what. Redox reactions. Okay. So to start with, we have an electrode there. We have got two, one on the left, the other one on the right there. Okay. So what basically happens is you have the solution this side and you have the solution there. So on the left hand side, which we are calling the anode, there will be a transfer of what? Of electrons to the other side. So, meaning that there is a loss of electrons in the reaction that is occurring at this side. So, that is what we said, oxidation reaction. So, in an oxidation reaction, we had noticed that there was a loss of electrons. So, meaning that the electrons were moving from this side, going to the other side, as seen by the arrows that are indicated on top there. Okay. So, they are showing the direction of the electrons. So, the electrons that are lost will be moving to the right. Okay. Then the other side is called the cathode. That is where the reduction reaction occurs. There will be gain of electrons. Okay. So basically, what happens when the electrons continue moving? So what the scientists have discovered is that after a chance of electrons, the electrons may be done this side. And so and the reaction will stop. Okay. So now that transferring of the electrons is what is creates a current, and that's why you're able to say voltmeter there. Okay, so the issue of transferring the electrons creates a current, but now we'll be able to what to do some work. So now, what is what uh, electrochemistry focuses on under galvanic cell? The conversion from the chemical energy that was stored in the atoms being you know being able to move the electrons, which will create a current. Okay. So now, they had discovered that after a certain period of time, the reaction would stop because all the electrons are going to move from the left to the right. Okay. So that's why they had to come up with a salt bridge. So a salt bridge now will provide, will provide what? It will be like a pathway for the ions to get back to the left. Okay. So that this reaction continues for the continuous provision of what? Or of current. Okay. So basically, this is what a galvanic cell is. Okay? So you can have a salt bridge, or you can have what? You can have a polar what? A polar disc, where the two are connected, as shown there. Okay? So the salt bridge is, only, is there to balance up the ions in the two uh, sides. Okay? So this is basically an overview about uh, the, the galvanic cell. One thing that you also need to understand is that a galvanic cell, on the electrodes there, we show the solids. That's where we show the solids. So like in the previous example where we had, um, you know, I'd given you an example where I'd shown um, magnesium, right? So I said where we have magnesium. So in terms of oxidation reaction, 
but magnesium solids losing electrons to become magnesium 2 plus. Okay, losing how many electrons? Two electrons. So the electrons are the ones that are going to be moving there. Then uh, the magnesium solid is one that you're supposed to show as the electron there. Then the ion is going to be in the solution there. Okay, so that's an example. Then on the other side, we we'll also do the same. The reaction, which is a reduction, the solid part is supposed to be shown on the electrode. Then in the solution there, you show us the ion. Okay. So now, there are some reactions, some up reactions or some redox reactions, where the ones that are involved are not going to, maybe they are in gaseous state. For example, if you have hydrogen being part of the up reaction, we don't show them as on the electrode. On the electrode, we only show solids. So what you can do, we have unreactive metals like platinum and reed. These are the ones that you, are, you can use on what? On the electrodes to represent the elements that are don't have solids in their reactions, on the in the half reactions, as we get to see, as we get to look at some examples. Okay, so this is an overview about a galvanic cell. Okay. Okay, let's talk about line notation now. So, apart from drawing the diagram of a galvanic cell, you can use what you call line notation to represent or what we are trying to show. Okay, so as seen, the first reaction is what? Since there is a loss of electrons, that is what? Oxidation. The second one is what? A reduction reaction. So we say that oxidation occurs on the anode, and in line notation, the anode is going to appear on the left of the oxidation reaction. So of course we always start with the electrode. So when we if we were to draw the galvanic cell, the electrode there would show magnesium. Then in the solution would have magnesium ion. On the other hand, you can have that one being the electrode, then this one being what? The ion in the solution. And you connect like that, and you show a solid bridge as well. So we talked about that in the first part. So now we can also use the line notation to denote that. So the electrode is going to be the first thing that you're going to write under line notation. So as like I've mentioned, we start with the oxidation reaction, which occurs on the anode. Okay. Then the rain shows a, a what? Shows shows that there is now there is a difference in the phase there. So that one will show now what is in the solution. So in the solution, you say are going to have the ions there, magnesium two plus in aqua state. So you have two lines there representing the third bridge. Okay, then now you show the cathode. Okay, so that's what you have now. Okay, so basically on the right, the cathode, you start with, uh, after, immediately after salt bridge, show the ions in the solution, then end with what? The electrode. So in cases where you have nanny metals, how do you show that? So like if you add all the other parts being nanny metals or nanny solid substances, you can put platinum or reed. But would not what? But would not the electrodes.